My first guests tonight are co-hosts of Showtime's political documentary series, The Circus. Please welcome back to The Late Show, John Heilman and Alex Wagner. <laughs> Friends, good to see you again. Yes, sir, good to see you. Always nice to have you on a live debate night. Now, I want to remind you, Alex, of something you said the last time you were here. Uh -oh. You said, uh -oh. especially anything. in these debates, you say, Dems eat their own yeah. in the primary. Yeah. Okay, who was on the menu tonight? <laughs> I mean, I think overall, people, people's appetites were not as robust as they could have been. Mm -hmm. But I do think you saw Mayor Pete take some incoming fire in large part because... The polls have him up in Iowa and New Hampshire, and that's a threat to the rest of the field. Elizabeth Warren, surprisingly, did not get much in the way of incoming fire, which I think is a testament to the fact that Democrats are feeling like perhaps she won't be the nominee. Um, but in terms of outright cannibalization and the feasting on other eyeballs, yep. we didn't really see it that much tonight. They're, they're leaving that to the Trump White House, the cannibalization thing. Well, there, the, the there, eating of the own. There, uh, but there, was a little, there were some sparks out there tonight. <laughs> Who, who did mix it up a little bit tonight? I mean, there, well, there were weird, odd bedfellows like Tom Steyer and Joe Biden going after each other. Tulsi Gabbard was like Yosemite Sam in a white pantsuit, kind of like aiming her fire like, at anybody who was standing. I think she always wears a white pantsuit so she can just eventually just sneak into the White House and they won't know she's there. <laughs> just blend in. Uh, Andrew Yang and Tom Steyer bonded over it's okay to be really rich. Yeah. A listen. Bold statement. And, you know, they're the ones to make it. Andrew Yang, I will just take this moment to say, Andrew Yang is going to be in this fight longer than people think he is. He... The Yang... Yang the, Gang? Also Yang Gang, the Yang, Yang, Yang the A Yang, Yang Gang of two, I but think, But the Yang Gang, they are small, but they are mighty. They are like... They are like sort of the inverse beehive. Like, Beyonce has her beehive, and they will sting you if you cross Beyonce. The mm -hmm. Yang Gang will find you on the internet machine, mm -hmm. and they will kill you on the internet machine if you say bad things about Andrew Yang. That aside... Like he should wear a tie. Come at me! <laughs> they will come at you for they're, that. They're in it for the cash, though. They know they're getting paid off at the end of this. Freedom Isn't dividend. that bribery? Isn't that illegal to bribe voters to vote for you by saying, I'll give you a thousand bucks? It's Donald Trump's America, Stephen. All right, sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> who had the best night, in your opinion, Heilman? Well, I, in a weird way, I, I think both of those two candidates we just talked about, you think about Elizabeth Warren and, and Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg on the rise in Iowa, on the rise in New Hampshire, and although he took some incoming tonight, he, nothing really happened to halt his momentum as he's going forward. So I think the Buttigieg people walk out thinking they had a reasonably good night. Kamala Harris had a few moments, and if you're any of these candidates under 5%, you're looking for some moments. She had a couple strong moments. And, you know, Cory Booker, who made, I think, if you think about this in terms of how these debates really are consumed, which is endlessly in the infinite loop of cable tomorrow, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing you played earlier, Cory Booker going after Joe Biden uh, on pot, will get some play because you're talking about weed, and then you had Biden stumbling into, which is a popular topic, uh, at least in my household, um, actually just in my office. Um, and, and, and then he made a mistake on, on, a, on a subject that always gets a lot of traction, which is race. So when Joe Biden made this mistake and talked about right. how there's only been one African-American female right. senator before standing next to Kamala Harris on the right. stage, mm -hmm. it is not a good thing when your political, uh, your political strength, if you're the front runner, and Joe Biden still thinks he is, it's built on the backs of African-American support. To be on the debate stage and being openly mocked by the two African-American candidates is not a great place to be. And I think that, that for both Booker and Harris will, will rebound to their benefit, or at least they hope it will. Now, when, if I'm, I got this right, when uh, Buttigieg was on the circus, he said he thought it's going to come down to him and Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did, what is that based on? Well, I, mean, I think... First of all, there's good polling to support that, right? Okay. I mean, they are ahead, and he mm -hmm. has good intel on that front. But I think it speaks to a larger truth about this race. There is an intra-party war that is quietly happening that we are not perhaps attuned to between the moderate wing of the Democratic Party and the progressive wing of the de Democratic Party. And, and the, the issue about which kind of candidate is best suited to lead the party in 2020 is 
very unresolved. And if anything, I think that that will propel this race much longer than Democratic voters would perhaps like it to. Do you think Obama coming out and saying, like, don't go too crazy, don't go too left, don't, you know, uh, Americans don't really like huge change, do you think that's going to have effect on the candidate's strategy? Because... Obama's endorsement or Obama's blessing is going to be enormous to these people. It is, although but Joe, there's no world in which Barack Obama is going to endorse any of these candidates in a Democratic nomination fight. But it is the case that there's already a widespread sense of panic among establishment Democrats within in the swing of dead cat uh, uh, vicinity of this theater. If you could hit, you know, uh, 5,000 Democratic donors who are all like going m mentally. They're unhinged, unbalanced over the prospect that Elizabeth Warren or, or Bernie Sanders could be the nominee, both because they would lose a lot of money in that situation, and also they think they would lose the election. And so there's already this panic that's happening. They are already looking for someone to, to guide the party back towards what they see as the middle. Obama's words for those people is, is something to cling to because the president seems to be basically saying, you know, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, a very unsubtle shot at those two candidates. I think if you go back to Pete's comment, though, it's turned out to be prescient. You know, Pete said this thing. Um, and he got a lot of flack for it, for saying it was going to be a two-person race. But within a couple weeks after that, he took the lead in Iowa, and now it looks like he might be taking the lead in New Hampshire. And if there's going to be, as Alex said, a moderate wing and a progressive wing, I think of it more temperamentally, though. There's a, there's a Barack Obama, bring everybody together, let's all get along unity wing. And there's the itchy and scratchy fight, 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 fight wing. And the fight, 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 fight wing is the Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders wing. They want to fight forever. we, we got to go to a commercial here because we're live. I don't mean to cut you off. <laughs> oh, yeah. But before we go out to commercial, I want to point out that it's 75 days until Iowa. And at this point in 2004, the leader was, of course, future President Dick Gephardt. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right up. back with more with John Heilman and Alex Wagner from Showtime's The Circus. We're going to talk about the impeachment hearing today.